a fintech, an emerging tool for financial inclusion and cashless society. Uh, so what is fintech? Fintech is a uh, financial technology that describes an emerging financial service sector in 21st century. Originally, the term applied to technology uh, applied to the back end of established consumer and trade financial institutions. It was introduced that time. But since the end of the first decade of 21st century, the term has expanded to include any technological innovation in the financial sector, including innovations in financial literacy and education, retail banking, investment, and even cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. So these are all part of uh, this fintech revolution nowadays. So India's position uh, in fintech sector. Today's India is one of the largest fintech market with highest fintech adoption rate of 87 percentage in the globe. Especially after post-COVID, India, along with some of its global peers, has been tremendous growth in fintech. As per the last report, India's fintech 100 billion US dollars opportunity by BCG and FICCAI. So India's fintech industry is estimated to inch up to 150 to 160 billion US dollars by 2025. So the current value is only 50 to 60, but there is a future, great future, it was estimated. So talking about fintech hubs, India is also only second to US with around 2,100 plus fintech startups as per MADICI's India's fintech report. So again, coming back uh, a clear meaning of fintech. Fintech follows those of technological startups having a revenue model much more scalable than that of a typical bank. The bank has a limitations uh, to operate, but Fintech has no limitations. They are providing a lot of services by uh, using of technology. Fintechs may provide a solution for sustainable finance with microfinance and crowdfunding among others. Recently, UN, United Nations, set for the SDG Sustainable Development Goals to be accomplished in the year of 2030. And out of these Sustainable Development Goals, a goal which, which was framed is Sustainable Development Goals 8, that means closely linked with financial inclusion. And especially the SDGs 8.10.1 and 8.10.2. 8.10.1 deals with the ATM means 1 lakh people uh, uh, how much ATM uh, has been uh, started uh, and 8.10.2 about accessibility of the financial service. So this 8.10.2 FinTech has a pivotal role uh, or FinTech act as a catalyst or mediator for reaching of sustainable development goals 8.10.2. So fintech generally attract customers with products and services that are more user-friendly, efficient, transparent, and automated than those of currently available. So the fintech using mobile technology. So it is defined uh, fintech as a service sector that uses mobile-centered information technology to enhance the efficiency of the financial system. It offers the greatest potential in countries with high smartphone penetration rates and inefficient old-fashioned financial system. Especially India, the fintech is of great and immense help for the inclusion of, uh, I mean, financial inclusion. Because in India, the fintech act as a mediator for the inclusion of the excluded people. Because the commercial bank has the limitations for the inclusion of the excluded people. But these excluded people can be included with the help of fintech technology. This slide explains the importance of fintech. Fintech promises to disrupt and reshape the financial industry by cutting costs, improving the quality of financial services, and creating more diverse and stabler financial landscape. The relevance of the link between sustainability, finance, and technology has been evidenced by the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, which has urged all the countries to rethink the model of traditionally deployed and rely more on technology and sustainability. Fintech is a business model so that a lot of startups are coming to the field uh, by uh, using the service of uh, fintech technology. 
So technological startups include companies operating in the fintech segment, providing services and financial products with information and communication technology. So fintech reformulate business models with innovative software and algorithms. Value chain based on interactive computer platforms, artificial intelligence and big data. So this is a fintech model uh, which uh, shows the uh, I mean dimensions of fintech. Fintech uh, uh, system is under the regulations of RBA and SEBI and uh, Fintech has economic sustainability and a lot of startups uh, entered into the field and they are they are doing innovation uh, with the help of technology and they are I mean they are engineering the financial new financial services and it is being retailed to the people or consumers. The types of fintech companies, there are two types of fintech companies, competitive companies and collaborative companies. The competitive fintechs are larger and mature firms, not necessarily hyper specialized, aiming to skews out new competitors with lower prices. And these are the uh, comparatively bigger fintech companies. They are uh, like, you know, to aiming skew, to skews out new competitors with lower prices. And other collaborative fintechs offer ancillary services to enhance the position of competitors cooperating with the bank. So the background for growth of fintech companies 5G technology enables the new industrial revolution. Industry 4 huge ongoing automation is in progress across different sectors. So, innovative and life enhancing business models are emerging and creates disruptions in the way business functions. The arrival of 5G telecommunication technology is expected to create new ecosystems of fintech and digital banking by offering new features and tools. So this is a uh, part of the speech by Arthur Levitt. He was the chairman of Securities Exchange Commission USA and he said that he compared fintech with the derivatives. So in every major financial market innovation there is a lag between early adoption and regulatory acceptance. This, that is the truth of fintech, just as it was true of derivative product. So derivatives is now <coughs> legally permitted in all the countries. The, uh, and actually it was, uh, you know, uh, derivatives were also resisted by the uh, regulators initially. And uh, over a period of time the derivatives was accepted and it was accepted in exchange. Now it has been trading more than the cash market transactions. So he compared fintech with the derivative product. Exactly the, the fintech is facing a resistance. It seems like, you know, the derivatives also was facing. The maturation of the fintech from its relative infancy to a more robustly understood and regulated set of products and services will be a process and it will be a time and effort. So that fintech offers great promise in creating economic value is not in dispute. The issue is whether the fintech products and services are transparent enough for regulatory oversight and understanding. So this is a very, very essential need of the fintech to prove the ability of the fintech for the financial inclusion practices because some of the process or functions are not transparent. It seems like Bitcoin faces nowadays. Bitcoin is not legalized in anywhere, but still the Bitcoin is transacted. But there are some resistance by the countries, government and central banks to, to be legalized Bitcoin as a currency. So this is going to be a challenge as it always is for financial market innovators, but it is essential for the long term success and public acceptance of fintech. So the slide uh, fintech revolution. So the slide explaining the key forces behind the fintech revolution. So the first one, most important one, is technology innovation, and there is a process disruption and services transformation. These are the three key forces behind the revolution. It's fintech revolution nowadays. So the causes of disruptions, uh, the why these disruptions in financial technology was happened. So new business models, new market mechanisms, shared technology infrastructures, disintermediation of bank segment of one marketing and cross-border innovations. These are the reasons or causes for the disruptions in financial technology. 
so the customers or the people are now experiencing new and new financial services experience uh, like uh, you know there are some reasons for that investment communities mobile payments blockchain based general ledger functionality risk management technology account deposits without branches so fintech trade support so these are the uh, new experienced uh, i mean new financial service experience so it is to be continued like digital wallets, robo advisory services, chatbots, brandless banking services, big data supported customer intimacy, personal financial management, financial research exchange. So how the finance fintech revolution is changing financial service operations? So as a part of traditional financial system, uh, go through different stages. Uh, uh, like you know uh, system design performance analysis and productivity forecasting inventory and cash management waiting line analysis for capacity planning personal scheduling operational risk management and pricing and revenue management so these are the stages in which a traditional financial services go through but uh, surprisingly fintech uh, is not intended to go through these stages the fintech system is totally different as i said fintech is a business model and it formed as a startups and changed the existing operational setups fintech has its own mechanism to start relatively recently the cost to launch the tech startup began dropping because of the open source software now available so this has allowed uh, new entrants into the market to create initial products that target very specific groups of customers based on their characteristics. The problem for incumbents is that the highly targeted companies are attacking each product they have on offer and that this leads to be unbundling of financial services.